is another word of God through Jesus Christ, street and outreach ministry, raw and uncut productions. Perfect time for the word. God bless you. We're getting ready to get into a powerful word. I'm getting ready to do some study. Y'all want to study with me? Come on and let's uh, let's see. You're watching the word of God through Jesus Christ Street and Irish Telecast, and I'm very grateful that you're here. Okay. Um, you can reach the ministry by calling four seven five three zero zero three eight. Five zero. And thank you so much for being a part of this broadcast. And watch this. Don't get caught up in the theatrics, but get caught up in the word. God bless you. My name is Apostle Alan E. Coleman Jr. The Lord has assigned me as apostle, teacher, and prophet of the word of God through Jesus Christ, Street and Outreach Ministry. Thank you for joining the ministry. For this broadcast that God is doing today. I don't know what he's going to do. I don't even know if he's going to have friends with me or not. I don't know. But we're going to find out. You can reach the ministry at 475-300-3850 24 hours. The ministry's website is also on the screen. So that way you'll know how to join us on the web. Not only that, but periodically there will be the cash app link on the screen so you can share love offerings to partner with us as God uses us to help others in street and outreach ministry. There's always ongoing fundraisers because God uses the ministry to help others just like he did when he walked this earth. God bless you and let's get in here and find out what it is the Lord want to say unto us. Come on. And now, to the Word of God, through Jesus Christ, with Apostle Alan E. Coleman, Jr. God bless you, and enjoy the message. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to the Word of God, through Jesus Christ, Street and Irish Telecast. My name is Apostle Alan E. Coleman, Jr., the Apostle, the Prophet, and the Teacher, assigned by God to work under him over this work. And thank you for joining with us tonight. I'd like to ask you to grab your Bibles, whether it's a King James or NIV or Living Bible, or if you just happen to have another Bible and you're a new believer.
just please grab your Bible because it's imperative that we stay in the Word of God. It's very, very, very important because there's some news that the Holy Ghost has given on to his servant to share with you, to help you in this time of trial, in this time of suffering, in this time of spiritual mishaps that you don't understand and you're seeking for answers. The ministry's prayer line, 24 hours, seven days a week, is 475 3850. Do not hesitate to call if you have a question about this lesson, which is going to be a full platter, or if you have any other biblical question, or if you just need to vent, or if you need prayer, hesitate not to call the ministry. 475 300 3850. There's people that often ask me, Apostle, how can I sow unto the ministry? Well, there's a cash app link that's going to show up on the screen. And that's in the description if you're watching by internet. And when you see the cash app link, allow the Lord to use you to partner with the ministry because we do street and outreach ministry. We are out there helping people. People that are homeless. People that are hungry. People that are sick. People that are just out there in the street lost, eating out of trash cans and things. That don't make no sense. And we are being used by the Lord to help them with the resources that the ministry has. But at times, we need help. When the world is in a crisis, they call on the world. Their homeboys and their homegirls. And they come. And they give. And they share. People do GoFundMe pages all the time for people that are in a crisis, whether it's to pay for a funeral, whether it's to get a car, whether it's to uh, deal with a cause or an illness or whatever. This ministry is only asking that you allow God to use you to help with the cause, one of the greatest causes in this world, and that cause is to help people. We not only care about the spiritual aspect of man, but the practical needs and the natural aspect of man also. There's some people that don't even feel good about themselves because their clothes are not right or because they have nowhere to live or because their hygiene might not be up to par. But with your help, the ministry can be used by God to help them. So the Cash App link will be on the screen. And for those watching by the internet, in the description. God bless you. Now, let's get into this word that God wants us to hear, this meal that the Lord hath prepared for us to feast on. I ask you to grab your Bibles, and while you're doing that, I ask you to turn to the book of Job. That's going to be the first scripture we're going to read. But before we even touch anything on the table, y'all with good upbringing, you know the deal. We have to say grace first. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come before you asking you, Lord, to forgive us for our sins and shortcomings and everything that we have said, done, thought, and felt that's wrong in your sight. Can none of us say that we have no sin because you said in your word that there is none righteous. <laughs> no, not one. Romans chapter 3. And we thank you, Lord, for telling us our problem so that we could understand that in order to come before you, we first, according to 1 John 1 and 9, have to confess our sins, our faults unto you that you will forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And then we can come before you as righteous vessels, bringing our prayers and supplication and needs to you. Some of us just need to talk to you, Lord. <laughs> some of us have never even met you. We've heard about you, but some of us, 
are seeking a relationship with you. Some of us are asking you to tell us what you're trying to teach us, Lord. Why are we going through things that we're going through? Some of us are in a situation that we understandeth not. Oh, Lord, the building has shaped some people to tell them that if you go to the building, that's the only place that you meet God. But we know that is not true. <laughs> oh, the woman at the well met you at the well. Yes, at the well. Elijah met you on the mountain. Moses met you on the mountain as well. You talk to him through a burning bush. So that kills the building theology. You meet us where we are. And God knows we're grateful. So there's people sitting in their home right now looking for you. There's people that are riding in their car listening to this broadcast by audio CD or audio cassette. And they're looking for you. There's people, oh God, that have been scrolling through the internet, typing in questions like, where do I find God? How do I reach him? What is the correct method to get to him? Where do I find his resume? The answer is in the word, your Bible, your written computation of your living computation. Jesus Christ. There's people that are in a crisis right now, don't know how to get out and they need you. There's people that have been told that Jesus Christ is not God and because of that things they've been trying to pray about have not been answered or working for them because they are going another way instead of the way <laughs> according to the truth and the life. So I ask you, Father, that you use this broadcast, this platform, this opportunity, this provision supplied by you to reach those that are humbly and desperately seeking you. I ask that you bless those that you're able to use to partner with the ministry as we help with the needs of others, spiritual or practical. And I thank you for the opportunity. Again, I ask that you allow me to decrease, that you may increase. And we rebuke the devil. We plead the blood of Jesus against him. Our glory. Let the tongues fly. Let the prophecies go those that are filled with the Holy Ghost and under the prophetic anointing, they would understand that. My brother apostles, you definitely would understand. Have mercy, Jesus, at this precious time. Now I ask that you lead me through your scripture. Bless me to be skillful with the word. In the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for hearing me and for answering me. Bless every prayer box in the ministries you have set up and answer every prayer request that are in those prayer boxes that you and you alone should get all the glory. Hear that family that's praying right now with urgency. Hear that person in the hospital that's getting ready to go under the knife, that's saying, Lord, I need you to guide the hand of the surgeons. Help the bereaved families tonight. I ask, Lord, that any mortician that's dealing with a body, if they are a believer, give them the best sermon that they could ever have as they do their work. Just have mercy, Father. And we ask you to snatch those out of the grip of Satan 
that he has his arrows aimed at. Hey, glory. We thank you for the deliverance that you and you alone do and can do. In Jesus' name. It's time, it's time out for religiosity. It's time that we connect with you. Our human spirit connects with you, Holy Ghost, who is God and the spirit of Christ. The paraclete. The comforter. We thank you, Father, for hearing us and for answering us. <laughs> In Jesus' name, we thank you and we pray. Amen. 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 I'm sweating because there's lights here at the ministry in the studio here. And the lights are bright. The book of Job, chapter 1. We're going to read, and the Lord has given me several scriptures to read. And then I'll give you the thought that God gave me and the title of the lesson. But first, let's jump into a meeting that was going on in heaven and that still often goes on in the book of Job, chapter 1. And let's notice verse 6. Scripture says, Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught, meaning for nothing? Hast not thou made an hedge about him, and about his house, and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now, and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. <laughs> so Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. And there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the asses feeding beside them. And the Sabians fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The fire of God is fallen from heaven. It hath burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon the camels and have carried them away, yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house and it fell upon the young men and they are dead. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head 
and fell down upon the ground and worshiped. And said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Chapter 2, we're going to read up to verse 10. And there was a day, again there was a day, when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth? That's a lot of place. The earth. A perfect and an upright man, one who feareth God and eschewed evil, and still... He holdeth fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him, to destroy him without cause. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life. But put forth thine hand now, and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. So went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the soles of his foot unto his crown. And he took him a potsherd to scrape himself withal. And he sat down among the ashes. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? In all this did not Job sin with his lips. Now, Please turn to Genesis chapter 3, and we're going to read the first seven verses. Now the serpent, and I'm, out of, I'm coming out of the King James Version in case you're wondering. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, this is important, because in the, in the Hebrew it actually says, because God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, ye shall not eat of it, Neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, which in the Hebrew it actually says a desire to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her. And he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened. And they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Which in the Hebrew it actually says, or things to gird about. Now I'd like to ask you to turn to Numbers chapter 14. Numbers chapter 14. And we're going to read verses 1 
through 39. Verse 1. And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried. And the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we have died in the land of Egypt? Or would God we had died in this wilderness? And wherefore hath the Lord brought us unto this land? To fall by the sword that our wives and our children should be a prey? Were it not better for us to return into Egypt? And they said one to another, Let us make a captain. And let us return into Egypt. Then Moses, the prophet, and Aaron, the priest, a.k.a. pastor, fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. And Joshua, another prophet, the son of Nun, and Caleb, another prophet, the son of Jephunneh, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. And they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search it is an exceeding good land. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it us, a land which floweth with milk and honey. Only rebel not against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bread for us. Their defense is departed from them, which actually in the Hebrew it says uh, their shadow is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. <laughs> in verse 10, Scripture says, But all the congregation bade stone them with stones, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation before all the children of Israel. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long? This is for y'all that say God is so passive. And the Lord said unto Moses, verse 11, How long will this people provoke me? How long will it be ere they believe me? For all the signs which I have showed among them, I will smite them with the pestilence and disinherit them and will make of thee a greater nation mightier than they. And Moses said unto the Lord, this is what the prophet did, he interceded, then the Egyptians shall hear it, for thou broughtest up this people in thy might from among them. And they will tell it to the inhabitants of this land, for they have heard that thou, Lord, art among this people, and that thou, Lord, art seen face to face, and that they cloud thy cloud, excuse me, standeth over them, and that thou goest before them by daytime in a pillar of a cloud, and in a pillar of fire by night. That's the kind of word. Now, if thou shalt kill all this people as one man, then the nations which have heard the fame of thee will speak, saying, because the Lord was not able to bring this people into the land which he swear unto them. Therefore he hath slain them in the wilderness. And now I beseech thee, Lord, I beg you, let the power of my Lord be great according as thou hast spoken, saying, the Lord is long-suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and by no means clearing the guilty visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. Pardon, I beseech thee, the iniquity of this people, according unto the greatness of thy mercy. And as thou hast forgiven this people from Egypt, even until now, which actually what that says in the Hebrew is, or hitherto until now. And the Lord said, I have pardoned according to thy word. 
but as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles, which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, and have tempted me now these ten times, and have not hearkened to my voice, surely they shall not see the land which I swear unto their fathers. Neither shall any of them that provoked me see it. But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him, and had followed me fully, him will I bring into the land whereinto he went, and his seed shall possess it. Now the Amalekites and the Canaanites dwelt in the valley. Tomorrow turn you and get you into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, saying, How long shall I bear with this evil generation which murmur against me? I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel, which they murmur against me, saying unto them, Say unto them, excuse me, he said, Say unto them, As truly as I live, saith the Lord, as ye have spoken in mine ears, so will I do to you. <laughs> Verse 29, God said, Your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness, and all that were numbered of you, according to your whole number, from 20 years old and upward, which have murmured against me, doubtless ye shall not come into the land, concerning which I swear to make you dwell therein. Or what God said, well, I lifted up my hand. When he swore, he lifted up his hand, I swear, to make you dwell therein. Save Caleb, meaning except Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, the son of Nun. But your little ones, which ye said should be a prey, <laughs> them will I bring in, and they shall know the land which ye have despised. But as for you, your carcasses, they shall fall in this wilderness, and your children shall wander in the wilderness forty years, and bear your whoredoms until your carcasses be wasted in the wilderness. After the number of the days in which ye search the land, even forty days, each day for a year shall ye bear your iniquities, even forty years, and ye shall know my breach of promise, which actually in the Hebrew it says my interruption a promise. You'll know why I didn't keep the promise I made to you. It's your fault. Verse 35, I the Lord have said, I will surely do it unto all this evil congregation that are gathered together against me. In this wilderness they shall be consumed and there they shall die. And the men which Moses sent to search the land, who returned and made all the congregation to murmur against him by bringing up a slander upon the land, even those men that did bring up the evil report upon the land died by the plague before the Lord. But Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephune, Jephune, which were of the men that went to search the land, lived still. And Moses, told these sayings unto all the children of Israel, and the people mourned greatly. I ask now that you turn to Hebrews chapter 11, and we're going to read 12 verses. This is very important and related to what the Lord is using us to talk about tonight. Hebrews chapter 11, glory to God. Mm. Those that are teachers, I like to say while you're finding Hebrews 11, those that are teachers, you're with me. As I'm with the Lord, you're with me because you see where God is going. But when the Lord leads me to say the thought and the title of this tater time, this powwow, this colloquy, then you'll really understand where God is going. You'll understand. 
Hebrews chapter 11, 1. Now faith. Now some people said, now faith. Now faith. Let me go back to verse 39 of chapter 10 and walk to verse 1 of chapter 11. And let's see the context. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Now faith is the substance which in Greek it really says ground or confidence of things hoped for. Mm. The evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things are seen, excuse me, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. <laughs> they came from nothing. They weren't in existence before God spoke it. Verse 4. By faith, Abel offered, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead, yet speaketh, which in the Greek it said, or is yet spoken of. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house. Which in the, in the Greek that actually says being wary. Being wary. By faith, Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear or he was being wary, you know, worried, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, Obey. And he went out not knowing whither he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which had which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged her faithful who had promised. Therefore spring there even of one and him as good as dead so many as the stars of the sky and multitude and as the sand which is by the seashore in Nunu. It's talking In scripture, Abel having all these children. Let's notice the book of John. I'm led by the Holy Ghost. Go to John chapter 21. But I'm led by the Holy Ghost to uh, go into the CEV. For some people, because that that verse can throw some people. So I'm led by the Holy Ghost to read it out of the C E V. And in the meantime, brethren, find John chapter twenty one. In the book of Hebrews, chapter eleven, verse twelve, scripture says let me go back to verse eleven. Even when Sarah was too old to have children, she had faith that God would do what he had promised, and she had a son. Verse 12 says, her husband Abraham was almost dead, but he became the ancestor of many people. 
In fact, there are as many of them as there are stars in the sky or grains of sand along the beach. I didn't want you to think that I was making anything up. So it's important to cross-reference, especially when you're teaching. John, praise God, chapter 21. And we're going to notice 22 verses. See, this is actually setting the stage so God can use us to get into the word. John chapter 21, verse 1 through 22. After these things, Jesus shewed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And on this wise shewed he himself. There were together Simon Peter, and Thomas called Didymus, and Nathanael of Cana in Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter said unto them, I go a fishing. They say unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately. And that night they caught nothing. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore. But the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said unto them, Children, this, this is what Jesus said. Uh, in the Greek it says, Sirs, have ye any meat? They answered him, No. Verse 6, And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved, that's John, said unto Peter, it is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girt his fish's coat unto him, for he was naked, meaning he had no shirt on, and did cast himself into the sea. And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from land, but as it were 200 cubits, dragging the net with fishes. As soon then as they would come to the land, come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid thereon, and bread. Jesus said unto them, Bring of the fish which ye have now caught. <laughs> Simon Peter went up and drew the net to the land full of great fishes, and hundred and fifty and three, and for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Jesus said unto them, come and die. Excuse me. And none of the disciples durst ask him, who art thou? Knowing that it was the Lord. Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and giveth them and fish likewise. This is now the third time that Jesus shewed himself to his disciples. After that, he was risen from the dead, meaning after he was risen. So when they had died, Jesus saith to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. He saith to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, Thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus saith unto him, Feed my sheep. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, When thou wast young, thou girdest thyself, and walkest whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. This spake he signified by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he saith unto him, Follow me. Then Peter, turning about, 
See, if the disciple whom Jesus loved following, this, this is John, which also leaned on his breast at supper and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? Peter, seeing him, said to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? Jesus said unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. setting the stage. Now I'll turn to 1 Peter chapter 4. We have this scripture and one more to read that we're getting busy. 1 Peter chapter 4. And let's notice 7 verses starting at verse 12. The apostle Simon Peter, the one the Lord was just talking about, he was led by the Holy Ghost to write, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice, Inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters, meaning mind in other people's business. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? Mm -hmm. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. Now, this right here is going to be the passage that's going to contain our meat, our pork chop, our meatloaf, our beef. Daniel chapter 10. And we're going to read four verses, four simple verses. And the Holy Ghost is saying that many have read these verses before and didn't get clarity because of the content. But there's many that have read it, and the Lord revealed to them what it meant because they deal in that field of ministry. And God used them to teach it, not just preach. Preachers stir you up, yes, but to teach it, to explain it, to make it plain. Daniel chapter 10. Let's notice. Okay. Let's notice verse 12. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel. For from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard. And I am come for thy words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia 
withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. And I remained there with the kings of Persia. Uh, the Lord said, throw an extra verse in there, verse 14. Now I am come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people in the latter days. For yet the vision is for many days. Uh, right, I want to go back for a minute. Right in verse 13 where uh, Gabriel said, but lo, Michael, one of the chief princes in the Hebrew, it actually says the first, one of the first, we're going to talk about that in a minute, one of the first princes. Now jump over to chapter, I mean, verse 20, and let's read verse 20 and 21 of Daniel chapter 10, and then we'll say our grace. Verse 20 says, then said he, knowest thou wherefore I come unto thee? And now will I return to fight with the prince of Persia. And when I am gone forth, lo, the prince of Grecia shall come. But I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth. And there is none that holdeth with me in these things, but Michael, your prince. And actually, in the Greek, I mean the Hebrew, the word there is strengtheneth himself. There is none that strengtheneth himself with me in these things, but Michael, your prince. The thought that the Holy Ghost hath given me. Years ago, the Lord used me to teach in a series or teach on a subject on television back in the late 90s, early 2000s. But he told me to bring it back because you can't re-sermon a sermon. Like there's some people that might have sermons written 10 years ago and they go grab it and say, let me redo this and then they redo it. But you can't do that. Because if you've been walking with God, then within the time of 10 years ago to now, you had to have grown. So there would be amendments made. There will be additional notes added because you've learned more. Hey! And that's where we are right now. So the subject the Lord used me to teach on back then in a couple of different episodes, I think it got up to, I, I don't know, part something. It's, it, I don't know. But I know the Lord told me, all right, he brought the subject back up last night to me. And he said, let's make this a series. I said, okay, Lord. And the title of the series is called Trials, Common, Tribulations, and Temptations. The series. That's the name of it. That's the thought he gave me. His thought. Trials, Tribulations, and Temptations. The series. The title of this talk is trials, dot, 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 part one. We're going to dissect, but remember the thought is trials, tribulations, and temptations, but tonight we're going to dissect and examine trials. Let's say our grace. Father, in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, we come before you again asking you to forgive us for every last one of our sins from the time we were born up to now so that that way our whole record is covered. That way the whole slate should be clean. Wash it with the blood of the Lamb. And bless us to stand before you like young chicks waiting for the mother bird to come and feed us. 
We stand with our heads up, our mouths open in awe when we think of what you've done for us. And we are waiting for you to impart more unto us that we should grow, that we should be able to go to the next level, that we should be able to get ministered to where we are right now, that we should be able to receive your strategy to be able to bring us to the next level. Many reasons that your people are coming to you right now. And some people do think it's strange what they're going through, but it's not strange. Because a trial is a trial. Is a trial. Is a trial. There's different types, but a trial is a trial. Please minister to us where we are. I tell you, that's, that was a powerful show. That was really, really, really a powerful show. Join us the next time when the Lord leads us to go back in the scripture with some more information. Maybe it'll be with one of my friends. Maybe it'll be just me. I don't know. Either way, the Lord will be orchestrating the lesson. God bless you. And take care. <laughs> Till the next time. In Jesus' name. Lord, I just thank you for all that I have in you. And all that you are in my life. All that you've done for thy servant. Lord, you're just so wonderful. You're just so wonderful. I can't think of how else my life would be without you. As long as I have Jesus, I have a satisfied mind. This is my prayer. Sometimes I don't have.
What did you say you had? Sad is my mind. When friends forsake you, sad is my mind. When my mother and my father let me down, sad I got is Jesus. my mind. What did you say? Satisfied.